welcome everybody here tonight. Um, it's a very special anti-war forum, very important, an eyewitness report on the criminal U.S. NATO bombing of Libya. Mm -hmm. This is the second stop of Cynthia McKinney's National Safety Tour, which is being sponsored by the National by the Anti Coalition. And here in San Francisco, we're very thankful to the Unitarian Universalist for Peace and the San Francisco Bay View newspaper, who are also sponsoring tonight's event. We want to express our great thanks to the Unitarian Universalist for Peace for securing this wonderful venue on such short notice. And in addition to Cynthia, we will be hearing from Akbar Muhammad from the Nation of Islam, who will speak along with her in various cities across the country, and Omar Ali, an answer organizer here in San Francisco. Before we start, I wish to say that when I'm reading and seeing the news about the war on Libya, it reminds me so much of what the United States and NATO did to Yugoslavia in 1999, just one of the wars it carried out against that country. I was in Yugoslavia with Ramsey Clark for several days twice uh, during the war, and in the United States, the media was so demonizing of the government of Yugoslavia, of the people really by extension, and the news coverage was outrageous. You didn't see the, what the damage and death that the NATO bombing did to that country. And I think it's the very same with Libya. And we're, that's why we're so fortunate to have Cynthia with us. The other is that that war began on March 24, 1999, and it ended on June 5th, after 78 days. And every day on CNN, literally, because I recorded every day, CNN said, starting with the news, today's bombing was the heaviest ever. And the bombing against Libya is escalating every day, and they reported that yesterday, 19 civilians were murdered, in addition to the 700 estimated who've been killed so far, and the war is not over. That's why it's so important to hear from Cynthia tonight. Um, this bombing began on March 19th, and I see so many parallels between the two. We're going to hold discussions after the presentation, and then there will be time for questions and comments. We want to make sure that there is time for Cynthia to answer these questions, having been in Libya directly seeing the events. The first speaker tonight is Omar Ali. Omar is an Egyptian-American student at San Francisco State University and an organizer with the ANSA Coalition. Please welcome Omar. Thank you, Gloria, and thank you to the Unitarian Church for letting uh, us having this venue today. <clears throat> Sisters and brothers, it is a critical moment in the struggle against U.S. and NATO imperialism in the Middle East and North Africa. Quote, from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli are the opening words of the United States Marine Corps anthem. This, the shores of Tripoli are the, same shores, are the same Libyan shores of today, on which the United States Navy, on March 20th, 2011, launched an aggressive attack on the Libyan people with 112 Tomahawk cruise missiles. On Sunday, Ju June 15th, NATO warplanes war struck a residential neighborhood in the capital and killed nine civilians, including two children, and today it's, uh, it's estimated about 19 civilians. The United States and NATO are imperialist forces that seek to dominate and control uh, the oil of Libya and to establish a friendly government towards interest, Western interests and policies. Imperialist foreign policy are driven by, by profits and expanding their control through military expansion. Even though the war machines never change their motivations and goals, Washington tries to pull on people's heartstrings. Indeed, so many of us have been inspired by the wave of revolts in the Middle East. At the same time, every country has its social, economic, political conditions and class, class lines. Thus, lumping them together is a mistake. And we must be analyzed in in each and everything in its own historical and political context. Why now to intervene in Libya? In Libya, the situation differs from that of Egypt and Tunis. A civil war erupted in Libya with armed rebels in the 
east with defected ministers and military personnel on one side and a large social base supporting the government on the other. Libya has the largest oil reserves in Africa and the ninth largest in the world with 41.5 billion barrels as of 2007. Libya has always been a big prize for the Western oil giants, both because of the uh, quantity of oil and, of course, specifically the high quality of Libyan oil. According to a leaked document from the State Department, Gaddafi met with uh, Cinco Phillips, Chief Executive Jim Rivera in Sarta, Libya, where he threatened to expel U.S. oil companies and threatened to drastically reduce oil, Libya's oil production. The Washington Post, which is a propaganda machine for the U.S. and NATO bombing, published a story June 11, 2011, about the leaked cable, Libyan cable. Quote, labor laws were amended to legalize the economy, and oil firms were pressed to hire Libyan managers, finance people, and human, re human resources directors. End quote. Pierce, the Libyan government is a threat to U.S. and Western oil giants for one reason, which is the state-controlled oil of oil production. In other words, the nationalization of the Libyan oil for decades ago is not in favor of the foreign markets. Despite making major concessions to imperialist powers in the past decade, especially Libya, uh, excuse me, especially Italy, the Western superpowers put Libya in the crosshairs for not completely bowing down to the will of Western domination. Western domination is always seen through the discourse of the media and misinformation. To support here for the wars here in the United States, the Western media tries to demonize the same line of racism and anti-Arab bigotry against the Libyan people as they did in the leading up of the Iraq war. The cover of the Time magazine, April 2nd, 1973, Title, quote, the Arabs, oil, power, violence, Libya's strongman Gaddafi, end quote. This title is just a few years after Gaddafi, after Gaddafi's coup, which exiled the Italian back King Idris from power. It is the same attitude towards Dr. Mohammed Mossadegh when he nationalized the Anglo Iranian oil company in 1951. New York Times described this action of nationalizing the uh, oil fields as, quote, nationalist fanaticism, end quote. <laughs> or, when not, or when Egypt's Nasser nationalized the Swiss Canal Company, he was depicted as, quote, Hitler of the Nile, end quote. <laughs> For the imperialists, the usage of racist language is the same way to teach the American public that self-determination of other nations is not applicable for capitalist interests. Of course, the Pentagon and the U.S. media fails to mention the bombing campaign in 1986, when, uh, which killed Gaddafi's adopted daughter and over a dozen civilians in Tripoli. How is Western hypocrisy defined in this war of aggression? It is evident in the narratives and actions of the Western powers as hypocritical actions which were taken in the region. The United States condoned the Gaddafi government regime for using violence against the armed rebels. At the same time, the United States turned a blind eye on the massive repression in Bahrain, Egypt, Yemen, and Saudi Arabia. It is, the same, it is clear for the situation in Bahrain on American foreign policy. A joint Bahraini and Saudi military action was taken to destroy the peaceful sit-in in Lugloa Square, which was repressed with tanks, live ammunition, and you like like bullets. <laughs> and the demolishment of the square itself. Be um, because it was a sign of resistance against the El Khalifa monarchy. Bahrain is home for the US fifth naval fleet, which provides tactical support for the United States Army in the region. In Egypt, Politicians like Hillary Clinton and former spokesman P.J. Crowley from the State Department said that, quote, Egypt was an ally, a friend, and an anchor of stability in the region. All these claims were made while tear gas canisters and bullets, which were used against protesters with one single label, made in the USA. 
The United, United Nations Security Council imposed a no-fly zone on Libya, but not on Israel during their aggressive wow. assault on Gaza, which left 1,400 Palestinians dead. <laughs> Obama, Sarkozy, and David Cameron called for, quote, regime change. Remember that? Iraq, 2003? <laughs> the same words of George W. Bush to justify their invasion of Iraq, which left <coughs> 1 million Iraqis dead and another 5 million displaced. The Interna International Criminal Court, in a matter of weeks, drafted an arrest warrant for Gaddafi as a war criminal while war criminals like Bush, Cheney, and Duns Rumsfeld have never even been charged. As an Egyptian who spent most of his life in Egypt and saw footage of Saddam Hussein getting executed, I refuse the notion that the ICC or any Western leader has the right of supremacy to execute any or African Arab leader How is, this considered, how is this considered imperialist opportunism? As the civil war was breaking out, Western imperialism saw an opportunity to es escalate its existing influence to bring down the government. The CIA and other Western intelligence agencies used forces in different countries to work on overthrowing non-Western allied nations. A Libyan reactionary force in the United States, known as the National, Sal no, National Salvation Front for Libya, which is a CIA-backed group of expatriate Libyans who worked in the late 80s and early 90s to overthrow the Gaddafi government for Western interests. Today, the National Salvation Front for Libya is working with the Pentagon as a propaganda machine to rally support from the Western public. Ali Tahrouni, who, who teaches economics at the, West, at the Western <coughs> at the University of Washington, returned to Libya after 35 years of exile to advise the opposition on economic matters. CIA and British SAS agents have been found operating in Libya with, with the rebels by several news me media agencies. Moreover, NATO has pledged millions of dollars in military weaponry for, for the rebels, and the British and the French on May 23rd sent an Apache helicop helicopters to support the rebels. Today, I don't know if anybody's seen the news, but there's been a, a non-man drone Apache helicopter that's been shot down and tripled. What does, humanitarian, what does humanitarian intervention truly mean? Humanitarian intervention in Libya is the same as it was in Somalia, Iraq, and Haiti. Washington and NATO intervened not to prevent a massacre of civilians in Benghazi, but to prevent the military defeat of the rebels. The purpose of the Western bombing was to prolong the life of the re rebels that was about to be crushed with a, quote, man mandate to protect civilians, and quote, the U.S. and NATO are, fl are now flying air cover for one side, arming one side, financing one side, advising one side. And in the process, they're really trying really hard to assassinate the head of a state of another country. The United States and NATO have killed over 800 civilians, injured over 4,000 civilians, and the number goes up when you include military casualties. Is this war in our interest here in the United States? No. Well, the most recent CBS polls found that 6 out of 10 people in the United States oppose the war in Libya. Civil war in Libya is a matter for the Libyan people to resolve on their, on their own without any kind, form, of Western intervention. We live in a country which spent $112 million on 112 Tomahawk cruise missiles, while politicians claim that there is no money to fund education, housing, healthcare, employment, so on and so forth. Suddenly, in the midst of these devastating cuts and layoffs, there were millions of dollars to launch a new attack and not to mention the continuous wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, and in Palestine. It is for us here in the United States to explain to our friends, co-workers, family, that this war, which, has, which we had no say in, is being waged with our tax dollars, 
most importantly, to confront American hypocrisy and to be out on the streets. If you learn anything from what happened in Tunis or Egypt, is that the people make history, not politicians, no one else but the people.